somewhere in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You know, I'm looking at one of these advice columns, and rather than reading you the letter... Someone wrote in to ask if this is acceptable. And, of course, it is not acceptable. But okay. Um, I know there's people out there who are in relationships, whether they are married or not, where the other person has, for some reason, stopped having sex with you. Gender irrelevant, because uh, it can go either way. By the way, I've been that person. I have been that person. And let me speak from my own point of view. You know how much I like sex. If I have stopped having sex with you, there's got to be a good reason. And chances are you're not listening to me. Okay? Okay. I have pointed out people on this program many times. They say, I'm going to be leaving my girlfriend this winter. And I say, well, great. Are you still having sex with her? And they say, yes. And I say, why are you doing that? Why are you still having sex with her? Why are you doing that? I mean, let's face facts. You're sending a mixed message. If you are having sex with her, it's like feeding the stray cat at your back door that won't go away. We've all done that. You see a cute little kitty cat meowing outside. She puts a little bowl of milk out there, maybe some little friskies. And then uh, the next day, the kitty cat comes back, meow, meow, wanting more. And so you put more out there. And after a week of this, now you're feeling obligated and you're saying, hey, why doesn't this kitty cat go to someone else's house? I don't want a kitty cat living here. I want the kitty cat to go somewhere else. I was just feeding the kitty cat because it was hungry. The bottom line is when somebody is hungry and you feed them, they're coming back for more. You have to stop feeding them. So if you're planning on leaving somebody... Or if you've told them you're fed up and you're leaving, having sex with them only confuses the issue. So I can tell you with certainty that I have been the person to stop having sex. And the message I was trying to send was not that I want you to live here for the next 50 years sex free. Uh, what I've been trying to tell you is I'm not having sex with you because I want you to go. You're not hearing me. I want you to go. I've had this happen to me two or three times over the past 15 years. I have been with women who are not getting the message. I want them to go, and they won't go. Then I stop having sex with them, and they're like, why aren't we having sex? What happened to our love life? What happened? Well, what happened is much bigger than sex. I told you I don't want to be in the relationship anymore, and you're not listening. So I have been that person. I can't speak for why other people stop having sex with you. It could be any number of reasons from the one I just stated to the possibility that they never liked having sex with you. They married you for your money. They married you because uh, they wanted to get away from their parents. They married you because everyone else was getting married. They married you because it was the right thing to do. You're lousy in the sack. They think you're lousy in the sack. It could be any number of reasons. 
The question, of course, from me becomes, why do you tolerate this? So I am wondering in this segment of our program if you are in one of these relationships. Has the person you're with told you, whether you're living with them or not, whether you're married to them or not, has the person you're in a relationship with told you, no more sex? I don't feel like having sex. No, absolutely not. No. No. Don't want it. Or are you the person who clamped down and said no? Are you the person saying, I don't want to have sex with you anymore? So I don't care which side of this you're on. If we put both sides on, maybe each side will figure out what the other is thinking. So are you in a sex-free relationship? Do call me and tell me why. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, I just wanted to call up and just congratulate you on being the number one pick. It's the Tom Likey Show. It's the Tom Likey Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, are you in a sexless relationship? Edgar on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. Hey, hey Tom. Hey. Uh, well, see, I have this problem with my girls. We're 23, and we've been together for almost five years. And she just decided to cut me off, you know, when it comes to sex. So, Well, that's what happens when you get into a relationship so young. You uh, got what you paid for, pal. Yeah, but I, I, I was wondering, what do you? Why do you think that is? Because she can. Just for that? Yes. But we live together and everything. We have a so kid what? together. And oh, you had a kid, so she got what she wanted. She wanted to have a kid, and uh, now uh, she got what she needed. Oh, uh, well, I don't think it could be that easy. But I guess, what do you think I should do? <laughs> Shouldn't have had a kid. Shouldn't have had a girlfriend. I mean, what are you thinking? Well, I mean, I just think, you know, I mean, I don't I, I, I don't know what to think to tell you the truth. I mean, I, I care about her. I love her. but Yeah, but you were too young to know. I mean, you made bad choices. You had bad judgment. You were too immature to make the right choice. You chose the wrong person. And mm. now you want to know how to get out of it. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I do not know why you had the need to have a child at such a young age. Well, you know what? I, I can't say nothing about that because my son did change me a lot. He, like, I left the path that I was in before. So I, I'm so you were glad. that Wait, let me understand. So you were that weak an individual that you needed to have a baby to change? I, you could say so, yes, basically. So when you were a gangbanger or something? What was your deal? Yeah, I was, I was basically, yeah, gangbanging. And yeah, basically, I mean, I, before everything, I wanted to be with my homeboys and everything. And when my son came along, I, you know, I, I decided to change because I wanted to stay home with my son instead of go out, you know, with my friends and everything. So, well, yeah. Tom, you'll be doing that for the next 18 years. <laughs> All right, Tom. Well, thank you. Can you take me out, Kobe style, please? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Are you living in a sexless relationship, whether you're a man or a woman? Not matter. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Good afternoon, Tom. Yes. Fortunately, I'm fitting into your uh, profile. Which part? Uh, Forty-one, married, coming up on two years, and we've probably had sex seven times this year. I probably corrupted my computer twice as many times due to, uh, you know, downloads. So, so you're, what, into Internet porn is what you're saying? Well, I'm just, you know, I'm not getting it anywhere else. And unfortunately, it's it's like it's a function of all the uh, fights and anger that has been built up now. Uh, it, it's actually probably more of a me problem. You know, I'm just like, I, I don't have that switch. You know, if you piss me off, I don't feel like getting in bed with you. Now, now how long have you been married? Coming up on two years. Coming up on two years, 
Now, do I see you on the screen that you have a child? I do. One. So, and how old is your child? Coming up on two years. So, you got married because you had a baby? Uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, we made things quote-unquote legitimate, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, well, she got what she wanted. She had a baby. She's got you to pay for it. What more does she need? Well, there's the rub. I mean, she's... She wins by by keeping me happy and not fighting because she's pretty horny. So if we could just get things to be normal. What do you mean uh, get things to be normal? I don't get it. Well, too, ma too many fights. Too much. Too many problems. Too many challenges. Yeah, but did you lived with her. But were you lived with her before you married her? Yeah. And were there, fi were there fights back then? Um, There were, but not to this degree. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't. I do not understand why you felt the need to get married. You could have a kid and not be married. I don't get it. Yeah, that's that's probably the summary right there. And that's what you should have done. If you were. Well, uh, by the way, why did you have a kid again? Well, I mean, I didn't. I didn't do it because I did not want to do it. But she definitely urged it on. No, no. But you did it. I did do it. Uh, why? Now that that's happened, Tom, I'm totally now, 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 And we'll get to that. Why did you do it? Um, at the end of the day, because she pushed. Can't but, deny why, it. Why, but, so what if she pushed? Why did you just push back and say, look, here's the way it's going to be. I'm 40 or 39 years old or whatever you were, and I don't feel like having a kid. End of story. Yep. Could have done that. I think the relationship would have terminated at that point. Yeah, and uh, look how much better off you'd be today. I'd probably be getting it somewhere. You're right. Yeah. I mean, you live in a dictatorship. Yeah. You haven't even heard the story, and you're right. <laughs> I mean, you, you're, like, you're like Venezuela. You voted in a dictator. Now you yeah. complain that you're living with a dictator. And and coincidentally, she's she's uh, she's Latina. Uh huh. And, she's from Venezuela. Uh, That's how they do it in Venezuela. And and uh, embarrassingly, yeah, the word em emasculation probably would be in play. Well, I, you know, pal. I mean, you'd already gotten what you wanted. You'd tap that ass, and when she starts making demands, it's time to go. Right. Well, but now we're married, so it's not that simple, you know? Well, it's still simpler than if you're married five years. Right. And, you know, every every two days you stay, you owe her another day of alimony. But I guess, yeah. I mean, I'm math, and I know the statistics, but it's kind of like, why, why do a fellow like me clings to, we're probably not that far off from being tolerably happy. <laughs> what do you mean? You're not having sex. I think the, I think if the fights and the nonsense stop, that'll come back to the relationship. There was plenty of sex early on. Yeah, but, the, but now you're married. Right. And this is what happens when people get married. Yep. Can't deny that. It's my second and time. You, you, now, you can't go back because you've now accepted her in the role of a dictator. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I keep looking at her that way. Right. Uh, so I got like a short fuse. You accepted it. All right, Once well, you've accepted that kind of thing, what are you going to do? You're going to uh, renegotiate? No, but the challenge is... My wiring since I was a young kid was that I would not stay in a relationship just because of a kid, and yet here I am, I think, doing that. Yeah, um, well, you are. Yeah. So that's kind of my daily sob story battle is I I know what my wiring is, and yet I'm I'm kind of living counter to it. You no, know? you're you're living, uh, well, you say you're living counter to it, but let, let's face it, you, step by step... Put yourself in this position. You did that. No doubt, no doubt about it. Yep. 
can't deny it. I mean, I'm not an idiot. You know, I didn't get led led along. You know, I, I made the decisions, no doubt. I, I don't know why. I guess I just obviously I, I, I wasn't green about it. This is my second time around, hers too. Uh, and we, you know, you just don't think it's going to get this gnarly with all the arguments. <laughs> why wouldn't you think that? Oh, fair question. I mean, I think every relationship's going to have some degree of fights. Yeah, but uh, you don't have some degree of fights. You have World War Three. Yeah, we're having we're having more than I I certainly can deal with sometimes because I'm just, I'm just not a fighter. I'm I'm passive. I'd rather just hey, if you want to be angry, I'm going to leave that for a while. You know. I'm, I'm just not into the fighting. So that's what happens is it just totally turns me off. Now, I'm basically a good man, so it's not like I go elsewhere. But, you know, it gets to the point where it's like, what the hell is going on? You know, what are we doing here? You know what you're doing there. You signed, first of all, you had a baby that you really didn't want to have. You didn't. Right or wrong? It's more right than wrong, definitely, but... Again, my point is, I, I knew what I was doing when I didn't use a condom. So You knew what you yeah. were doing, but what you were doing was, she was such a fine piece of ass, you were in that mode where you would do anything she wanted. Not, I mean, yeah, I know where you're coming from, but not in the mindset of a stupid 25-year-old. You know what I mean? I know what I'm getting into. No, um, you, but you didn't know what you were getting into, because did you know you were going to be in this position? No, uh, I didn't think the relationship would, would be so soured and, and full of challenges with two people that have already been divorced once. You, you figure late in your 30s, you're going to have your act together a little bit more. I don't know why you would assume that. Yeah, just experience. Hang on a second here, Steve. Let me get Rob on the air. Hey, Rob, what did you want to say to Steve? Man, step up and be a man. You know... Get rid of the dictator. You're in this relationship. You say, oh, you have a child. It was really good. She's horny. Tell her what you want. Tell her what you expect. And don't put put up with anything less. Yeah. Flat out, okay. You know, it I'm could married be a 13 years. You know, after the kids, wife started a little bit less, a little bit less. Gets to a point. No, that's not acceptable, Period. But here's the rub. The rub is she'll have sex every day. It's just I'm the one that's kind of turned off and tuned out because of all the BS. Yeah, you know, again, then it's, the, then it's the BS. What is the BS? Tell her this is not acceptable. Period. Right. Step you're, up. You're still in a relationship, right? And if if she's not, if it's not going to work, then to the curb she goes. Yep. Now I hear you. Makes sense? Makes sense. Good feedback. All right, hang on a second. Brandy, what did you want to say here to Steve? Hey, Tom, how you doing? Long-time uh, listener, about third-time caller. Thank you, Brandy. Look, I've been married to my husband for 10 years, and I'm just starting to, starting to get this no compromise, no change, no arguments thing. You know, my husband, as long as he's getting what he wants, he's a happy man. And I don't deny him anything. His dinner is made, his clothes are washed, his kids are taken care of. I even just started going back to school. You know what I'm saying? If she can't get herself in gear, ditch the broad. Oh, boy. I cheat on the state. I mean, if I can get her to clean the house, do laundry, cook food, it'd be all good. Look, look, all I'm saying is she has to learn how to prioritize her life according to according to you. My husband works. He is the sole breadwinner. So when he comes home, you know, he doesn't have to worry about lifting a finger. You understand what I'm saying? He can come home, crack a beer open, and relax. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm pretty sure you feel the same way, too. You don't want to walk in the door to a house full of screaming kids, you know, to arguments like what took you so long to get home. And, you know, a guy doesn't want to be bothered with that. And I understand what my husband was talking about now. He wants to come home, and he wants to come home to a peace, peaceful place. You know what I'm oh, saying? You, you just said the word that I keep asking for is peace. I just want peace. 
um, hey, you're hitting on the head. I came home from a business trip at 9 and there was no friggin' food in the fridge or anything. And here I am out at the grocery store at 10 o'clock. And I'm like, you know, what the hell is this? Like, Where you're getting I... it wrong because that's her job. Even though I even though I go to school four days a week, I still go grocery shopping. I still cook the food. I still take care of our kids. I still make his dinner. I do everything. I still pay the bills while my husband goes out and he works his behind off. My husband bought me a brand new car, which I'm very happy about, which gave him a six year a six year pass. For any anniversaries, even though he still takes me out, I don't expect anything, you know, and he treats me like a princess. I don't deny him sex when he wants it because I'm just as horny as he is. And, you know, I put it like this. If she gives, if she's trying to give you everything that you need, you should be happy. If she's not, there's somebody else out there that will, honestly. And that's the truth. And it took me 10 years to figure that out. I got married young. You understand what I'm saying? I'll be 30 this year, and I'm just starting to get it. Men are not going to change. You guys are not going to change, and I realize that, and she has to realize that. And if she's entering close to her 40s, she should have gotten it already. How is it that I've managed to get it, and she's, you know, still still uh, slacking behind? Right. That you. That's good. another good point. I, I think that's been the challenge is we've had these power issues in the relationship. And I probably sound That's like a because you pushed. That's why you're having power issues. Nick, what do you want to say to Steve here? Well, this guy's got a man up, grow some cojones, and, and get this thing done. It's just out of control. What do you mean? It's not... What do you mean, what I mean? You're, you're just sitting here whining, oh, oh, poor me. And just man up and grow some cojones and, and say how it is. All right, Nick. Uh, thank you for that. Let's get one more in here. Uh, let's get uh, Jim. Jim, what did you want to say here to Steve? Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm okay. Okay, Steve, bottom line. Okay, you say there's a lot of BS going on, right? Which means arguing and, and whatever. Um, and you say that you... You, you're staying pretty much because of the kid. Well, if you really care about your kid, you're going to worry about what a bad influence it is, what a bad example you're setting for your kid with where you, there's not a lot of love going on. There's a lot of fighting, argue, arguing, yelling. And, you know, kids, no matter what age they're, I don't care if they're six months, a year, two years, they pick up on that. It's very negative. And that's, all they, that's what they're going to remember, what a, what a bad relationship for, the parents had and what an example you're setting. So if you really care about your kid, I seriously think about getting out. Um, what do you think? Does that sound about right? Well, unfortunately, I can't, uh, I, I can't argue with that. There's times when we're talking pleasantly, and he just, out of nowhere, he says, quiet, because he thinks we're fighting. And we don't even... I mean, how, how, old is your, how old is your son? Two and a half. Two and a half? Yeah. He's oh, wow. wow. Yeah, you know, he picks up on that. I mean, it's just kids. I mean, I mean, even if he was six months, I would still think he'd be picking up on it because they, you know, it's it's very unnerving for them. You know, they, you know, they want they want to be in a loving family, a loving relationship. If you guys are separate, there's no fighting going on. He can be with his dad in a loving atmosphere, separate from the mom. When he's with his mom, there's no fighting going on because you guys are separate. That you know what I mean? I mean, it's just you got to think about the kid. You know, I you think you, you know, it's it all. You know, you know, in theory and in actuality, it sounds easy enough, but unless you've been through it, it's hard to kind of pull the plug and move on and and set all that up. The kid first, if you really think about it, I'm just trying to give you something to think about. You know, and I, obviously I can't tell you how to live your life, but this is, I just think there's something you should think about. If you really care about the kid, you know, the kids pick up on all that negativity, all that fighting, and it's just, you, you know, you don't realize until later on, that what what that's going to do to them? Because maybe they're going to have a hard time having any kind of healthy relationship because of the example you're setting. Right. You know, it's something to think about. That's all I got to say. I'm out of here, Tom. Can you take me out, Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 
We have time to squeeze one more in here before the break, and I'm going to do that at half past the hour on the Tom Likas show. Are you in a sexless relationship? Are you the cause of it? Is the other person the cause of it? Dave, what did you want to say to Steve? Yeah, hey, uh, Steve. Hey, man, here's the deal. Um, I, I, I feel you, brother. I'm 40. Um, I was married to an incredibly hot Latin woman myself. But I'll tell you what, man, she tried to run those games on me, you know, trying to take charge of everything and tell me how it was going to be and this and that. And we went round and round. And, Tom, you know what? You told me to get out DTB. And I didn't listen to you. Yeah, you that do, worked out. You better. Uh, well, you know what? I, I, I kept all your uh, thoughts in the back of my head. And uh, I, put, I bucked up and balled up, man. And I got the hell out of there and dumped her. We were married 63 days. And I told her, hey, you know, this is how it's going to be, and if you don't want to do it, this is this is a done deal. And she's strong-willed like the Latin girls are, and she said, all right, fine. And it was a done deal, and I got the hell out, and I got the best Latin girl in the world now, man. She loves me. She cooks for me. She cleans for me. She washes my clothes. She's got dinner waiting when I get home. Dude, I know I know how it could be when, when you know, you get hooked up with some girl who, who you know, you're crazy about, but there's better out there, dude. I, I couldn't be happier, honestly. All right. Appreciate it. All right, Steve, Dave. Uh, thank you both. Thank you for the calls. Wow. I, I just can't imagine staying in a situation like that. I can't. I can't imagine doing it. Are you in a sexless relationship? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wes on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Wes. Anyway, I got one. I know you've heard pretty much everything, but I got one for you right, right through you. I came home off the road, and uh, she went ahead and told me that she fell on the edge of the bed. She goes, sex is for procreation only. Said she can't and never will have kids. She didn't need it or want it. And I looked at her and said, I didn't become a priest either. So that was it. So she was trying to, but the thing is, she was trying to tell you there was something else wrong in your relationship. Uh, do you have any idea what it might have been? No, I don't. But I know I'm going through divorce number three, and I'm going to take a page out of your book. No reason to get married. They, you, I don't know what you need it for. I don't. I, I'm on, I drive long haul. I listen to you from the West Coast to the East Coast over the Internet. And, um, you know, I just, I don't need it. So, adios. Makes a lot of sense, Wes. Have a good one. Nice listening to you, and I enjoy listening to you. So thank have you, a good one. Thank you so much for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. All right, you're in a sexless relationship, a sexless marriage, because the other person won't have sex with you. You don't even know why. Or maybe you do. Or maybe you're the one who said no more sex. If you're in a sex-free relationship... Call me and tell me why. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Some of these girls who think they're hot stuff, I mean, like a 12-pack of beer. If, if one bottle breaks, hey, there's many more that'll probably work out just Like better. a bottle of beer, you better drink it when it's fresh because it's going to go flat at some point. The Tom Likas Show. Tom, are you in a sex-free relationship? Do tell. Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Dave. Dino will go find Dave if he's out there somewhere. Jacqueline on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Well, long-time listener, first-time caller, and uh, I'm actually driving home, and I was compelled to call in because my story is actually pretty hilarious. I was with an ex for about six years, and I don't know why I stayed that long, but the last two years, uh, we didn't have sex. Not that I wasn't interested, but uh, we couldn't have sex, and when I urged him to go see a therapist, his therapist told him that Emotionally and psychologically, he couldn't, quote, uh, get aroused. 
because I was more successful than he was. I was making more money than he was. So he, he viewed himself in the female role and me in the male role. All right. And uh, what was the result of that? The result was I kept the ring and I broke up with him. Wow. And did he care? How did he react? Um, he did care, but now I'm happily married to somebody else. So obviously I've moved on and found somebody who didn't have that issue. Uh, I've been married for eight years. We have three beautiful kids, and uh, we celebrated our wedding anniversary two months ago, and we are like rabbits. And I think that's what makes my relationship with my husband successful. Well, they I say, think I think that's good. They say, they say it's not, you know, sexual chemistry. It's not everything, but I would probably bet that most of your listeners will agree with me. It's probably one or two of the most important things in a relationship. Wow. Well, I'm uh, glad to hear things are working out better for you now, but, um, you know, these people who stay in these sexless relationships, I don't understand it. I don't understand why they do it. All I can say was, you know, I hate to say that I was young. I mean, I was young. I was, you know, 21 when I met him, so I stayed until I was 27. But, you know, it's it's the old thing of, oh, I love him, and we were planning, hopefully trying to get married and this and that, and I stayed way too long, but I definitely learned my lesson. And I tell all of my girlfriends, all my guy friends, you know, that is that chemistry is really, really important, whether you've been together a short period of time or a lengthy time. It's, it's really, really important. You have to have that in a relationship where there's going to be other problems, whether you or your partner wants to stray or, you know, fighting and tension. You don't need that. Yeah, I agree with you. I'll tell you what, I have no tolerance for that stuff anymore. None. None. No, nobody should. No matter where what, your success level or your education, nobody should have to deal with that. I agree with you. Well, uh, Jacqueline, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. It's John on the Tom Likes show. Hello, John. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Uh, how's it going? I was in a sexist relationship. I was in a sexist relationship for like, Ten years. Ten years? Why did you tolerate yep. that? Wait, wait. Yep. Why yep. did you tolerate that? Well, I thought things would get better, you know, like, oh, well, you know, I'm going to get it eventually. I'm going to get it eventually. But did you ever have it? Like, when I got it, it wasn't that good. No, I mean, in the beginning, did you ever have it? Yeah, in the beginning, it was, uh, you know, here and there, here and there. Well, if it wasn't good in the beginning, why did you get with her in the first place? Oh, because, you know, she was young, I was young, and, you know... You know, it was good. But you it, just, it, it, but you, you just know, said it was here and there. It was here and there. It was, here and there, it was you know, never it, that good. It was never that good. Nah, not always. Right? No, that's why I call, no, that's why wait, I wait, 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 wait. We're not done. Uh huh. If it was never that good, why did you get with her in the first place? For obvious reasons. For what, obvious what do you reasons. mean? What do you mean obvious reasons? What's so obvious? Well, you know, either way, I just thought like I was in that relationship, so I got I got rid of it, and that, that was the end of that. No, no, it's, no, uh -huh. no, no, no. You're in complete denial about this. Why did you get into a relationship with someone where the sex was lousy and there wasn't that much of it? Oh, it was good, Tom. It was good. I mean, she she was doing things, you know. She was she was a freaky, freaky then kind of girl. Then when did know? that stop? Well, that stopped. I was getting tired of it. I was getting tired of it. So, so I just said, nah, that's not for I me. Yeah. You're, this is too much. I can't take it anymore. I really can't. Uh, Maria on the Tom Hi. Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm great. Hi. I've been listening to you for a, a couple months now. And, um, I've been married seven years. I have two kids. Um, wait, how right old now, are you? Wait, how old are you? 25. Why did you get married at 18? Um, I was young and dumb and my husband was older than me, you know, um, my our family knew each other, you know, since we were little, and um, uh, he moved next door to me, and you know that doesn't mean me you need it. to get married. I know, but I was young, and I mean, I knew what else I was doing, but you know, I don't know. You knew what you were doing, or you didn't know what you were doing. I knew what I was doing, and um, and it was the wrong choice, and you know. The first so you knew. Let me understand. You knew you were making the wrong choice. Um. Yes, I did. But you did but, it anyway. Why? Because I was dumb and, you know, um, I got two girls out of it, but that's... But you could have had two girls ten years from now. I know. 
I know. Um, just, I mean, because of this, you know, um, it stopped me from going to school and, you know, like a lot of stuff. He just held me back. And, um, you know, I've been married seven years already. Right now, he's not working. He takes care of the kids at home. And I'm lucky if we sleep together once a month. Because he doesn't want to have sex with you? Yeah, I mean, the cause probably is because both of us, you know, we both, we split up for about six months, about almost two two years ago already, two and a half maybe. Um, you know, we both did our thing. We both were, um, you know, uh, with somebody, I guess. And um, when we got back, you know, I told him whatever, but we're trying to work on it. And, you know, he always complains. Either his headache, or you know, he ate too. It's too late, you know. He ate too. He ate, and it's too late already. Um, or his back hurts, and you know, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm fed up with it. I don't Are know you the way? The way you're the one supporting him? Yes. Did you ever consider the possibility that that's the reason? Uh, no, I. I don't. I don't know why he always. Men to... are defined by what they do for a living. They are defined by whether they bring home the bacon. So. It's like the roles turned or what? Like he, and he, and he probably doesn't feel very manly. Well, he watch he watches the kids, you know, and I mean, um, that that does not make a man feel manly. I know that's, pro but I mean, he says it. Okay, put it. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's just we don't even sleep together in the same bed, Tom. What? <laughs> I'm telling you, we're trying to work on our relationship. I mean, but it's not going anywhere. It's, it's just I'm fed up with it. I want to get away, but it's hard, you know, with two girls. And, you know, like I said, he's the one taking care of them. And I don't have a lot of family to help out. But, but, but um, wait a minute, though. I mean, <laughs> do you hear what I'm saying? You're the one working. Yes. He's not. Yes. And and this is how men feel. Men Men are used to being the ones who work and bring home the money. Yeah, I know. Um, but is that was that why or what? Because he doesn't feel manly or what? I I will bet that's a problem. So I mean, what can I do? I I mean, I try to get close to him. I try, you know, go over there and, and you know. Well, he to needs to get up and... off the couch. Why isn't he working? Because his back and, I mean, he got His back? Off. What is he, 80 years old? No, he's just, he's 30 years old, but he has, like, you know, a bad back. But, I mean, he always uses that, or he'll eat late and say, oh, I just ate. It's too, it's, you know, I'm full already, or... Yeah, well, uh, forget, gotta... about, forget about his excuses. The main reason is he's not working. Yeah. He's got to go to work. I know. I push him and tell him, he says, that in about a month more, he will, and, no, you know... No, 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 Darling, uh... <laughs> Uh, honestly, getting married at 18, big mistake. Uh, and you know what? It was on my birthday. Of course it was. <laughs> the first day you were legal. <laughs> yes. Legal. But what can I do? Just have him get his butt off the couch and go to work? Uh, you, you tell him you're going to be with a husband who works. Whether it's him or somebody else, that's it. You can't change him. I threatened to leave him last week. No, no, uh, you don't threaten to do anything. You do it or you don't do it. No threats. Well, I mean, threats I I are game playing. Threats have, you know. are game playing. Threats are drama. I, uh, and and he I'm knows it. I know, but I'm in a financial situation. I mean, I don't have, you know, I would have to be sneaking behind his back to try to look for another place. And, you know, it's like a lot of, it's a lot of crap. And But he's uh, not helping. He's not supporting you anyway. I know. I mean, you're not going to be in worse financial shape than you are now. <laughs> you could rent a smaller place. Yeah. Yeah, with, which would cost less. Yeah, that's true. So it's either leave or have him get a job, right? You can't make him do anything. So you tell him, I am going to live with a husband who is employed. Interested? Okay. If he's not interested, go. No threats, no promises, no deadlines. You just do it. Okay, so you think the main reason is because he's not working, right? I think that's the main reason. I think that when men are out of, by the way, here we are with all the crazy stuff going on on Wall Street and all yeah. the crazy stuff going on with the economy and the unemployment rate is through the roof and the foreclosures are through the roof. And inflation is crazy. There's a lot of guys like that right now who aren't working or can't make enough money who feel the way your husband does. But yeah, you know but what? Is that really going to stop a man from, you know, wanting yes. to? Yes.
Damn, I don't know. Men must feel manly. <laughs> Men don't feel manly if they are not getting the job done in the in the income department. Yeah, I guess um, I I didn't think that I didn't I didn't really you know. Think That's about because that. you are young and immature, dear, with relatively little experience, probably no experience. No, actually, no. Just yeah, he's like the only one. You know, this is why you don't know this. Well, that that you know. That I mean, where would you learn? Where would you learn it from? Yeah, you're right. I know. I, I should have listened to my mom when she was when I was younger. She told me. She would tell me, "Don't." I know it's gonna happen already. You're gonna get married with him. You're gonna have a kid with him. I already know. I could see it. She would tell me, and um, you know, uh, unfortunately, when 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 we're young, we don't we think we have everything, and we don't we don't listen to people when they tell us. You know. I've been uh, telling people this for years. I know. That's why I listened to you. I started listening to you. And, uh, but I don't know. I didn't think about the main thing that it was bugging him, I guess. And You are not going to change him. I know. He's a stubborn guy, too. Well, you're not going to change anybody. So you don't think that there's a chance that I can get him going to work within a month or nope. two? Nope. <laughs> no, I don't. No. Our email address, Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.